Now, uh, we're asking tonight, is the net closing in on former Steinhoff CEO Marcus Joester? He's been found guilty of insider trading, and he and three others have been fined 241 million rand. He may still face some more serious charges, uh, being the face of a scandal involving false financial reporting that led to the collapse of the Steinhoff share price three years ago. To discuss, uh, we're now joined by Financial Mail editor Rob Rose uh, via Skype. Uh, Rob, thank you for being with us. Uh, just uh, for for people who um, aren't a fay with sort of insider trading, explain what he did wrong here, sending uh, SMSs that have been deemed very expensive. Um, and, uh, you know, is this a good sign in terms of, of justice uh, for those who, who lost money in the Steinhoff scandal? Yeah, I think so. I mean, essentially what insider trading is, it, it's, it's, it's a thing where you, you, as a CEO, you have inside knowledge of what's going to happen in the company. For example, if you know that the company is going to make a loss this year or a huge profit, and then you tip other people off to buy or sell the shares because you know that the share is likely to react in a certain way. Um, essentially, the stock market is supposed to operate in a way that everyone gets the same information at the same time, and then the market um, is more efficient like that. But if you're the CEO of a company, you obviously have privileged knowledge of what's going to happen. And if you tip off somebody that this is going to happen or that's going to happen, and you sell the shares, you either save yourself losses in the, as in this case, or you make extra money that other people wouldn't. In this case, Marcus Euster knew that there was going to be a disaster happening in Steinhoff in a week's time from when he sent the SMS. So he told four people, including the former Springbok prop, Oki okay, Ostesen, and his, his driver, um, that they should sell the shares because things are likely to go bad, bad for Steinhoff. And within a week, the share price collapsed sort of 70%, and, and the guys who sold their shares would have not made the loss that everyone else would have had had to have sustained. Yeah. So that's what insider trading is in a nutshell. Um, and it's a really good sign that, 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 the, that the regulators are cracking down on this. It's a sign that there's some justice finally for Steinhoff investors and people who, who were taken for a ride in that company. Um, and the wider market, I suppose. Yeah, but but he is facing uh, much more more serious claims, and this is three years later. Uh, where where is the process? What what are you expecting in terms of a possible movement on possible fraud charges, even? Well, I mean, the thing is that the the, the actual fraud is very complicated, um, but it's a huge fraud, and it shouldn't take three years to get to the state. PwC did a forensic investigation into what happened, found that there was massive fraud. I mean, there was there was profits, fake profits in the accounts over more than a decade of, of 106 billion rand. So, you know, there's already a forensic investigation done on this. Um, you'd think that the Hawks and the NPA would have acted quicker on this. And it, and it's pretty much an indictment of their ability to, to deal with complicated financial crimes at this point. Um, and it also doesn't look great when... when the NPA is cracking down on politicians and government officials, but can't put people, the big fish, um, like Marcus Yosta, can't even arrest anyone in this yeah. case. Yeah, yeah, it's often uh, implied or, or said that the, the private sector gets an easy ride, that these rich uh, business people get an easy ride. Uh, so, so you're saying that's not intentional, uh, but it does point to the actual skills. I mean, you need uh, incredible financial skills to sort of untangle this mess if you're in the hawks, for example. Absolutely, it does. But the thing is, you, you can't, you can't an, overestimate them importance of this particular moment. If we don't, if we're not able to, to prosecute a crime like Steinhoff, it'll lead to foreign investors not believing there's true accountability and consequence in our market, and they won't want to invest. So it's, it's vitally important for local investors and foreign investors that, that there is accountability and, and action on Steinhoff. I mean, people know that, should know that when your pension funds lose massive amounts of money, as in this case, somebody's going to be called to account for it. It shouldn't just be a free for all, and you just think, "Oh, well, it's complicated, and that's that." Yeah. I mean, there has to be there has to be action. I do believe it will happen, but it's just taking longer than it should. Yeah, I mean, even the European Central Bank was invested in, in Steinhoff at the time, and nobody saw this coming. You, you wrote the book Stein Heist, and, and you've looked at this. What do you believe Marcus Euster was aware of? What is he guilty of? Well, in this case. You know, the insider trading case, he realized that the auditors weren't going to sign the accounts, that there were massive amounts that weren't, you know, profits that shouldn't have been there that were in the accounts. I mean, like I said, 106 billion rand in fictitious profits is what the forensic auditors found. So that's a massive case of misrepresentation to investors and fraud. Um, it's, it's actually PwC that, that, that 
flagged Marcus Eusta and eight others as the masterminds of what happened in Steinoff. Um, so there's this massive income statement fraud in this case. I mean, it's our largest, our largest fraud in this country, far exceeding the likes of Master Bond and BBS, um, which is why it's so critical that, that there be some accountability on this. Yeah. And talk to us about possible motives, uh, because it's it's very interesting. Sometimes businesses sort of get into this hole and they try and get themselves out of the hole, start sort of misrepresenting the figures. Uh, maybe the ship will balance in future and then they can start being honest. Um, do, do you think it just it just got out of control? And Marcus Houston knew what was going on, but he he um, felt like he had no power to, to then be honest. It had gone too far. Or, or was there real malicious intent uh, behind here. Just, just explain it for lay people. Well, it's hard to reach into the mind of Marcus Yost at this point. I mean, I do think that we have a sense for what happened in previous financial crimes of the scale, the sort of Bernie Madoff party Ponzi scheme in the US and other crimes like that. And the common story is that, you know, something happens, there's a hole in the accounts and people try and cover it up thinking, like you said, that it'll get better next year and, and then things can work themselves out. Um, but it actually just gets worse. It's a slippery slope. And then you find yourself having to do other things to cover up that particular fraud. I mean, you know this particular situation. You've looked at companies like this. Um, one one sin tends to beget another. And then you find yourself four years later and, you know, 100 billion rand down. And you wonder what the hell happened, I suppose. Yeah, it just uh, spirals out of control. All right. Before we let you go, uh, Rob Rose, what is Financial Mail sort of focusing on in terms of the, the U.S. elections, uh, in terms of the economic impact, the South African impact? Or, or is this just interesting, uh, looking at, at what's happening abroad? Um, well, I have to say that I think, um, fingers crossed, uh, Donald Trump disappears from the White Office and the, the multitude of lies he's told never returns to the White House. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I, do, I think that at the moment Trump has been a very inward-looking president. He hasn't particularly focused on foreign countries or continents like Africa. Um, I'm not sure that'll particularly change for us. Um, certainly the, the wider global economy shifts a lot. I mean, the, the trade tensions with China, I think, will, will, will change dramatically once if Biden gets in, which at this point looks likely. Um, but I do think that it's, it would be some extent, some kind of victory over populism and irrationality in public office. And, you know, we have lots of people in this country close to public office who, who display ex exactly those characteristics. So hopefully it's an indication that, you know, the populace is only going to accept that for a few years and then, and then call people to account. All right. Uh, thank you for your time tonight. That was uh, Financial Mail editor Rob Rose.